Welcome aboard the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Podcast, where we're dedicated to helping first-time and experienced boaters find the right boat at the best price and ensure all boaters have years and years of happy boating fun because life truly is better on a boat. Today's podcast is sponsored by the First Time Boat Buyers Academy, so you can find the perfect boat at the lowest possible price and buy with 100% confidence. For a short video, visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash academy. I referenced some graphs and charts in this podcast. You can visit the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon YouTube channel to view all of those resources. Now, let's hop aboard and have some fun. Captain Matt, and today we're talking about boating versus RVing. Now, there are two great pastimes, two great hobbies for the family, but we're going to talk about the pros and cons of each. So, we're going to talk about non livable boats versus RVing. So, we're just talking about the lifestyle, not living on an RV or living on a boat, but, you know, pontoons, deck boats, bow riders, cruisers, just day boating and RVing. We're going to talk about the pros of RVs, the pros of boats, and the cons of both, and then which is best for you. So, we're brought to you by the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Toolkit. You can pick up your free copy, which includes checklists, questions to ask, uh, boat ownership calculators, as well as a couple special videos that we put in this year for 2021. So, grab that free at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. Now, let's jump into the pros of RVing. Well, the number one is you can travel and you can overnight in your RV. So it gives you the opportunity to explore everywhere and you've got everything you need all in that one unit. You're traveling, you're going wherever you want to be, and you don't need to mess with hotels, you don't need to mess with reservations, you don't necessarily need to mess with a strict itinerary. You're in charge and you can do it all. You can also visit multiple attractions. So you can go to you know the the mountains, but once you get to the mountains, you can kind of set up shop. If you have a tow vehicle, uh, or even if you have uh, a, a travel trailer, you can unhook, leave that there, and you can go explore and see multiple attractions from your home base, which is your RV uh, or your travel trailer. You can also, you can escape that normal day-to-day -day routine, you know, going to the office, coming home, having dinner, going to bed. Um, you get out and you're in your RV, you're probably in nature, and you just get a whole new experience. You get a detach, you get an unplug, and it's a great uh, stress reliever. You can also have adventures and explore. You get out, you go to different parts of the country, you go to different um, different climates, you go to different uh, environments, you can go to a RV park, you can go to uh, water, to lakes or rivers or streams, you can go in the mountains, you can go to the beach. There's just a, everything opens up to you when you're in an RV or a travel trailer. And it frankly, it's pretty easy to do. You know how to drive a car. Um, it's, you know, a, a easier version of camping, really. Um, so there's there's not a whole lot um, to learn. Of course, there's there's things to learn, but you don't have to learn how to how to do um, everything from scratch. You also get the opportunity to meet new people. So you're out and about, you're at different parks, uh, you're at different campsites, and you're going to meet other RVers, other campers, um, people that enjoy that experience. And the other thing, I'm a dog lover. I've got two dogs, and you can bring your pets. It's nice and easy to bring your pets. Uh, a lot of uh, RV parks allow it. Not all of them, so make sure you check before you go. Um, but you can bring your whole family, including your pets. Now let's move over to boating. Um, this is obviously a boating site. I have my personal preference, but one of the big pros is you're with friends and family. So you can load up that boat, not just with your immediate family or a small group, uh, but you can load it up with everybody um, based on the, the size of boats you have. But typically even a small boat, you know, you can fit six or eight people on board. You're around water. Uh, if you've if you've watched the video on the Blue Mind, a, a book that I, I reviewed, um, 
it's relaxing. Being along, around water just relaxes your whole body. It has actual uh, scientifically proven impact on your brain. <laughs> and it's better for you uh, to be around water and in water. And it's also affordable-ish. We'll talk about this in the cons a little bit. Uh, but you can easily buy a pre-owned boat that's in good shape. Follow all the advice you find on this channel for you know 10 grand 15 grand you know which equates to maybe a hundred to 150 dollars a month for the payment um there's a whole boat ownership calculator in the toolkit you can look to make sure it's it's affordable for you but for two or three hundred dollars a month you can cover everything that you need to uh with boating it also opens you up for a variety of activities. So you can go out and just anchor out and relax. You can do water sports. You can tube. You can fish. Uh, you can cruise and explore. Um, you can entertain. Uh, you get a swim. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do on a boat, and you get to do it in beautiful scenery. There's not much prettier than being on the water. Um, the you know the surrounding nature around you just engulfed in nature, uh, and, and it's uh, it's very very cool. It teaches responsibility. Um, there's there's something about boating that there's a lot of stuff to do. Uh, tying up the boat properly, bringing up the anchor, uh, maintaining the boat, wiping it down, and uh, keeping it clean, keeping it dry, uh, loading and unloading it. There's there's a lot of things that teach kids responsibility, um, and, and it's something that a lot of people I know that are boaters have really found that to kind of be a, a surprising pro that they didn't expect. Um, you also, you can meet new people out on the water. There's always new folks on the water. You're going to meet them if you want to. You don't have to because you can go off on your own, uh, but you can easily pull up, uh, meet somebody on a dock or at a restaurant or just anchored out in a cove somewhere at the marina, um, and you can meet a whole new group of people. And typically boaters uh, tend to be a lot of fun, and it's going to create lasting memories for you and your family, which for me is something, you know, being a boater for over 40 years, I have a lot of my best memories are on the water. Now, like everything, there's cons. It's not all uh, sunshine and roses in RVing and boating. Um, the first con of an RV is it's kind of a single family activity or a small group. Um, you've got to get a really, really big, uh, maybe a diesel pusher or, or something to have more than four or five or six people on board at the same time. Uh, with sleeping and everything. So it really it, it lends itself to a smaller group. There's lots of driving. Um, you know, you think of an RV and you're, you're exploring. You're not going to the same places. You're typically going to be driving uh, hours to different locations. Now, if you're my wife or kids, the bugs and the snakes, if you do your camping out in nature, there's critters that come with that. Uh, and, and that's a, a big turnoff for some people. Uh, finding good RV sites. There's a lot of RV sites, a lot of campgrounds out there, uh, but finding the good ones that have availability that you can get a reservation uh, can be difficult. There's also maintenance and storage. What are you going to do with the RV when you're not using it? Where are you going to park it? Uh, are you going to park it undercover or indoors to, to keep that roof from leaking and minimize ex the exposure? And then you've got maintenance. Uh, Tires is an unexpected expense for a lot of RVers that, hey, those tires wear out over time. It's not just miles, and you don't want to have a blowout. There's oil changes. Uh, there's maintaining the interior. Uh, all of that goes with the ownership. There's the cost of gear. You know, it's it's not just you're going to stay in the RV. You're going to need chairs and maybe some, um, some camping equipment, uh, maybe some cooking equipment. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff that goes with it. The you know the mat that you put out front, maybe a, a canopy or a tent, um, a lot of different things, and then the cost of fuel. Like we said, there's a lot of driving, a lot of exploring. It takes fuel to do that to get everywhere you want to go. So there's definitely cons with boating as well. Uh, one of the biggest ones is learning a new skill. So this may be a pro to some people, but it's something that new boaters need to understand. There's a, a learning curve with boating. 
um, and you need to take the time and, and even partner with somebody or, or get a course, take a course on the new skills that you need for boating, how to operate a boat safely uh, and easily, trailering a boat, docking a boat, tying a boat up, towing somebody on water sports, anchoring out. There's a, a, a lot of different new skills that need to be learned that um, you've got to take the time. You can't just jump in day one and you're off and running. Um, you've got to learn those skills and it'll make everything that you do that much more enjoyable. Breakdown maintenance and storage. Unfortunately, uh, boats have a, a, a history of breaking down. They operate in a harsh environment, especially if you're in salt water, but even fresh water, um, things will break. Um, and you need to be aware of that and you need to be okay with that, that at times something's not going to go perfectly right. Even if you get a brand new boat, there's likely going to be one or two little things, maybe more that come up that you have to get addressed. Now, typically they're not major, um, but, but things break on a boat, um, and, and you have to be okay with that. And then there's the maintenance, doing your oil changes. It has an engine in it, oil changes, uh, gear lube and pellers, which are, are specialty things that a boat has. Um, that need to be addressed. If you have a more complex boat like a cruiser, there may be other things addressing the generator, your fresh water tanks, things like that. Storage. Where are you going to keep the boat? Are you going to keep it in the marina? Are you going to keep it on the water? Are you going to trailer it? And then where are you going to store it on the trailer? All of that comes into, hey, it's, it's not it's a little bit um, stressful. There's a lot of things that go into owning it. You got to think about these things beforehand. Um, the cleaning, you've got to keep a boat clean and, and keep it dry so that mold and mildew don't begin. You know, for growing up, it was wiping the boat down every time we used it. Uh, we pulled it off the trailer and, and you wiped down the outside and somebody wiped down the inside and cleaned everything out. And then we waxed it once or twice a year and, you know, every month we would pull all the gear out and clean it inside and out. For, for us kids, it was fun. For me now, it's still fun. I love cleaning a boat, uh, but not everybody does. And, and I'm going to list that as a con. Access to good water. Depending on where you live, uh, you may have to travel a little way to, to get to the good water where you want to where you want to boat, whether it's a lake or a boat ramp access to the intercoastal. Um, whatever whatever your situation is, um, you've got to find out where that good water is. The cost of gear and fuel. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can add on to a boat to make it even more fun. Um, so you know tubes. Uh, ropes, uh, water toys, life jackets, anchors and anchor line, the stuff for your cabin if you've got a cruiser. Um, there's a lot of things that go with it. And then the fuel, uh, which if you go and anchor out most of the day and you just hang out and swim, um, you won't use a lot of fuel. If you're doing water sports uh, and you're, you're surfing or skiing or wakeboarding all day, you're going to go through a significant amount of fuel. And you've got to figure that into the cost um, of ownership. Because one of the worst things that can happen to a boater is you buy the boat, then you don't have the money um, to do the proper maintenance, to fix it if something breaks, and to get the gear and fuel. Uh, and now you've got this thing that was supposed to be a lot of fun, and now it's a, a big headache for you. Uh, and, and then the short seasons in some parts of the country. So all of that added up um, are, are some of the cons. Although I will say about the short seasons that most people can extend the seasons if they, and really to some fun boating into the fall in certain areas um, where it's really enjoyable. The lake is much less crowded. The water is much less crowded in, in most parts of the, of the uh, country. Uh, and those can be a lot of fun. So boats or RVs, what's right for you? Well, it's a personal preference. For me, the call of the water, um, being around the water, it wins hands down. Even if I was to, to RV or, or be a camper, I would take that to the water. And once you're at the water, you want to be on the water, not just by the water. Um, and, and the cons for me, hey, fitting into the budget, check. Um, you know, handling, operating a boat, check. Um, it, it's to me, it's a challenge. Just like when I got my my pilot's license, there's a challenge to learning that new skill. 
um, the cleaning, the maintenance, all of, for some people that tinkering uh, can be fun. There was somebody on the podcast uh, just a week or two ago that talked about he loves to tinker. Um, and if you love to tinker, boating can be, can be great. So you've got to decide that getting out and exploring the, exploring the country or getting on the water for the relaxation and everything that the water offers. I'm going to go boats every day of the week. Uh, obviously, that's that's why I've got a boating channel. Uh, but hopefully it gives you something to think about. Um, would love to hear your thoughts on boats and RVs. What you like best about them. If I missed a pro, if I missed a con. Um, ask your most pressing questions. Let me know what kind of boat you're shopping for. If you're shopping for a boat, uh, give us a thumbs up, a thumbs down. Be sure to subscribe. Just hit that uh, red button to subscribe. YouTube has recommended a couple videos for you. Um, and if you haven't and you're considering a boat, get that Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Toolkit uh, at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. Um, and we'd also appreciate if you shared this on social media, uh, in your boating groups, in your RVing groups, and uh, pass the information along. Have a great one. We'll talk to you next time. Let's pull up the anchor and run this podcast back to the dock. We'll be back again with another helpful and fun episode next time. If you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash guest, and I'll help offer insights into your boat research and shopping experience. Also, we'd appreciate it if you took just two minutes to rate and review this podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. It helps others find us so we can help more boaters. By the way, if you want to ensure you find the perfect boat at the lowest possible price so you can buy with 100% confidence, visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash Academy for a short video and all the details. Now, before we go, I want to leave you with a few first-time boating tips for when you own your new boat. Number one, know your local boating laws, basic navigation rules, and how to operate your boat safely. It'll make boating even more fun for everyone. Two, be aware of your wake at all times and pay attention to no wake zones because you are responsible for your wake. When maneuvering at slow speeds, you can put out an enormous wake. If going slow, be courteous, save some fuel, and drop down to idle speed, just in forward gear to ensure there is no wake. This could save you an expensive ticket and will keep you from being that guy on your waterway. Number three, boats do not have headlights. They have docking lights specifically made for seeing in tight quarters and docking. Do not turn your docking lights on while cruising down the water. It can blind other boaters and is very dangerous and, again, could save you an expensive ticket. Number four, follow the maintenance schedule for your boat. Change the oil, impeller, gear loop, winterize if you need to winterize in your area. Inspect your trailer tires, bearings, and grease the hubs if you're a trailer boater to ensure you don't experience expensive and unnecessary repairs that will impact your boating time. Number five, always double check your plug is in, your battery is charged, and the fuel is full before heading out for a day on the water. It could just save your boating day. And if you're a trailer boater, I've got a few extra tips. Number one, at the boat ramp, prepare your boat your gear, and your guests in the staging area. Then, when you're ready, back down the ramp, unload the boat, head to the parking lot, and right back down to your boat to be fast and courteous to your fellow boaters and don't tie up that ramp unnecessarily. Next, use transom tie-down straps when trailing your boat. Very bad things can happen if you don't, and they do happen. Three, Check everything in the boat is secure before heading down the road. Seat cushions, gear, keys, towels, even tubes and lily pads can get blown out when pulling your boat down the highway or interstate. And most important, have fun. Enjoy your boat and get on the water as much as possible because life truly is better on a boat. Until next time, this is your friend in boating, Captain Matt.